here. What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it with another Giants preview video. This Sunday, we got the Cardinals of Arizona, not the drink, the state. Even though, you know, yo, the $1 bottle Arizona's, you know what I'm saying? The uh, the half and half sweet tea with a uh, lemon iced tea, man, that'd be tasting good. But anyway, getting off topic here. Uh, <laughs> we got the Arizona Cardinals coming up, y'all. Uh, Cardinals, a team, one of the oldest in the NFL, if not the oldest in the NFL, you know, going back all the way to when they were called the... Uh, the Maroons, I think, and then they changed the name because the color they were wearing were actually Cardinal Red and not Maroon. This is not a history lesson, though. This is a this is about to be a lesson in which the Giants can win this game and possibly climb back up in the NFC East rankings. Because, as you all know, and for those of you that watched my NFC East video, the last video I made, the East is in a mess right now. Uh, it's kind of it's not wide open, but it is more open than a lot of people thought it would. Top two teams sit at 3-3 three and three with the Cowboys on a three-game losing streak and the Eagles on a one-game losing streak. The Giants are technically one game out of the lead from the NFC East. And next week, the Cowboys and the uh, Eagles face each other. So one of them is going to come out there 3-4. Uh, and four. It, And that means the Giants, if they win this game against Arizona, which I think is very winnable, will also come out 3-4. and four, But the Giants will be... They will be ahead of that team and they will be in second place, I believe. Either way, the end goal to make the playoffs isn't going to be through the wild card spot because the NFC is absolutely packed right now. If we make it out here and we make it into the playoffs, it's going to be by winning the NFC East. You know what I'm saying? We got the Saints in the South, the Carolina Panthers still doing relatively well in the South. Even to a, a lesser extent, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the West, we got really three teams. You know, if you kind of count the Rams, even though I don't know what's going on with them, they did make a trade for Ramsey. But in general, the West is really competitive with the Seahawks, the Niners, and the Rams. And the North, of course, with uh, the Packers, the Bears, the Vikings, and even the Lions. Like, they just took an L, but, like, that entire division is competitive. So either way, no matter what way you slice it or dice it, this is a must-win game for the New York Giants. I still believe we are we can make something out of this season in terms of you know winning uh, I don't really think we're gonna make the playoffs realistically because of how stacked the NFC is but that doesn't mean I want us to start losing right away either there's a couple Giants fans out there who hold the opinion that yo why do we even try winning anymore let's just lose and get the highest pick possible well we don't do that because we're not in that stage of rebuilding anymore that was kind of like last year and the year before we're more in the transition year where you want to see how all your parts work together right now. And if you try and lose on purpose, you're not going to see how your, all your parts work together. And you're not even going to see what your most glaring needs are. So, you know, trying to win is a thing. And, you know, just give some respect to the game of football. Go out there and give it your best effort and all that, you know. Build a winning culture around the locker room. Even if we don't finish with a winning record, 7-9 and nine is a hallmark of teams that are rebuilding, showing that they go in, like, the right direction, you know. So I do not want to stop trying to win. Like, I want to continue to win. I want to continue to go out there and put up the best effort possible out of respect for the game. And also, logically, it would allow the team to be built better. But with all that being said, a very long-winded intro. Let's get into this game and why I think the Giants could come out of it with a, you know, a, a really good chance to win. And they could come out of it winning. Now let's start off with the Cardinals offense that uh, very much talked about and highly anticipated air raid offense that thus far hasn't exactly taken off in the way that Cliff Kingsbury and his Arizona Cardinals expected it to take, take off. You know, it's very hard on any type of level to transfer anything from college to NFL successfully. And it doesn't look like the air raid transition is working well, but uh, they're getting good yardage per game, which is about the only thing on their offense that's going good right now. Uh, they're ranked 17th in the league in points per game with 22.3 points. Uh, yards, they're ranked 9th in the league with 376.8. Passing yards, 11th with 254. And rushing yards, 12th with 122.7. So what does this tell us? It tells us that they're moving the ball up and down the field a lot, but they're not scoring nearly as much as they need to to you know be competitive in these games. And um, also, Kyler Murray, he's been sacked quite a few times throughout the first six weeks that offensive line has performed better than I expected it to but it's still a really bad offensive line out there in Arizona 
which is something I definitely think the Giants can take, you know, advantage of, given how we performed very well against New England with our pass rush this past Thursday night. Well, I guess last week, Thursday. But the Cardinals offense, really their weakness lies in the red zone and also with third down conversions. They're only 36 of 85 on third down conversions while allowing their opponents to convert 32 of 75. Combine that with the fact that it's a team that struggles to score and you really got a recipe for disaster on the offensive side as to why they've been losing games. You know, they're 2-3-1 and one right now, fourth in the NFC West. The Cardinals, they've also, you know, they face some good opponents so far in the season. Their first four weeks have been really, you know, really tough weeks. They came out with the Lions and they managed to tie there, which surprised a lot of people. Then they faced the Ravens, lost as expected. The Panthers lost, which wasn't expected, but they still, you know, that was like the debut of Kyle Allen and whatnot. But the Panthers still went out there and kind of whooped the Cardinals. Then they went up against the Seahawks, lost there as expected. The Bengals is where they got their win, and also the Falcons is where they got their win. So the Cardinals, in my opinion, has at this point in the season had a very similar schedule to the Giants in which the Giants faced the Cowboys they lost as a lot of people expected then they faced the Bills they lost which was unexpected for me went up against the Buccaneers managed to pull out a win went up against the Redskins managed to pull out a win well they didn't manage to pull out a win they really blew out the Redskins uh, then they went up against the Vikings and lost another tough team and the Patriots and lost another the toughest team to go up against so they've had very similar schedules um, this far in the season. They had very similar opponents, really a lot of defensive heavy opponents with good offenses up there. But the difference has been between these two teams, their offensive. The Giants have a worse ranked offense compared to the Cardinals, even though on the Cardinals side of things, they've been relatively healthy. The Giants, I don't want to make excuses for them because I don't like to sugarcoat my own team. You know, it's bad for anybody. The Giants are ranked 24th in points in the NFL, averaging 80.5. 339.5 yards overall, that's 24th also. 234 passing yards, 18th, and 105 rushing yards, 18th. And like I said, once again, there's a lot of factors that go into this. Our first two games were played with a different quarterback in Eli Manning than our rookie in Daniel Jones. Um, a lot of our receivers have been hurt throughout the season. Right now, you know, just last week, we had basically all of our main offensive weapons out in Evan Ingram, in Sterling Shepard, in Saquon Barkley. The only person we could really use was Golden State, and even then he was still kind of adjusting to our system and all coming back from his suspension, being away from the NFL field for a while. But we've been missing a lot of guys, and we're down to third, fourth string guys on the offensive side of the ball for the skill positions, while the Cardinals, for the most part, have been healthy. I don't want to say completely healthy, but they have been, for the most part, healthy. And that's where the difference lies in, you know, that disparity between our offenses. Either way, though, you line up and you face who you face, it doesn't matter, right? But I think this Giants offense and this Giants team as a whole is better than this Cardinals team. Our defense also ranks worse than theirs. But, there's a but here. We're improving, whereas the Cardinals defense seems to be stagnant and staying at, you know, its level that has been at the beginning of the year. Over the course of the past two, three games, the Giants defense has really sort of picked up a notch, especially the pass rush. And I'm really surprised and pleased with the performance of our linebackers, considering that we're out of our stars and we're down to second, third string guys. We're down to guys from a practice squad. And the linebacking core is performing consistent. It's not consistently amazing or consistently well, but it's consistently good. You know, it's, it's, it's just good enough. And you want a lot more, but... It's actually a lot coming from these guys who are on practice squads for a reason. And that's why I'm proud of this defense as a whole. The pass rush has been really improving. We've been getting a lot of good stuff from Dexter Lawrence up the middle. Shout out to MZ on YouTube. He tweeted at me uh, on Twitter, by the way, follow my Twitter, shameless plug. He was tweeting at me saying that Dexter Lawrence is ranked as one of the best interior pass rushers of 2019 and he's just a rookie. And I've been, I said that when we picked him up, I said this dude has a lot of pass rush potential from the inside and he's been showing it. Marcus Golden has been the, one of the greatest pickups in recent years, you know, because he's only we're only paying him $3.75 million for this year and he's outperforming his contract, most definitely our best pass rusher. O'Shane Zimenez has had a good rookie year so far. Lorenzo Carter had a nice little comeback game, hopefully can keep that up. But our pass rush is going really well, and our linebacking core for what it is is also performing really well. So 
I like it. Our defense has been steadily improving, whereas the Cardinals look kind of stagnant. But they're very similar in the rankings. The Cardinals defense is ranked 29th in points allowed, 38 in yards allowed, 38 in pass yards allowed, 26th in rushing yards allowed. While the Giants defense is ranked 27th in points allowed, 28th in yards allowed, 31st in passing, and 24th in rushing. So obviously, you know, our biggest weakness would be the secondary on that defense. But it's kind of, it's kind of to be expected. And like I said, we're improving as the season goes on. So I think as a whole, we're a better team than this Cardinals team. We can take advantage of their really bad offensive line. With guys like Dexter Lawrence up the middle, Dexter Lawrence and B.J. Hill. And then with Marcus Golding exploding off one side, Lorenzo Carter or O'Shane Zimenez coming off off the other. A lot of O'Shane's, O'Shane's plays actually, when you look at the film, have been clean up from like Marcus Golden pressures, which is really nice to see. And you know, with that, maybe our coverage is downfield can get a bit more time to adjust to these uh, receivers that we're going to be playing out there because we got a really good receiving court coming in in the Cardinals with Larry Legend, Larry Fitzgerald, and Christian Kirk. These guys, they're going to, they're most likely going to burn us, but I don't think they're going to be able to score because of their red zone struggles and their third down struggles. But those are guys we're going to have to look out for. And then on our offensive side, because of how the Cardinals are ranked, uh, they do have a good pass rush. You know, it is a very underrated pass rush, but Chandler Jones is out there. He's still doing his thing. But I think our offensive line can hold up against it. If we can hold up against uh, the Vikings and the Patriots, we can hold up against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not saying we'll be perfect, but I want to minimize it down to one sack. And hopefully, uh, Daniel Jones can make the plays he can make with Saquon Barkley coming back. Who, by the way, I'm expecting to have an absolute monster game. Saquon Barkley will have an absolute monster game in his return. And he should, Pat Shermer should feed him the ball. But Daniel Jones is going to be the Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley show tomorrow against the Cliff Kingsbury and, and Kyler Murray show tomorrow. I don't really think it's going to be a duel of the quarterbacks, no matter how much the media wants to paint it up to be. Even myself, I mean, if you look at the thumbnail, I have it labeled as, I think, like, battle of the first round quarterbacks. But it's not going to come down to that. It's going to be more so... A battle of this of the line of scrimmage, you know, between the offensive line and the defensive line for both teams. I think that's what it's going to come down to. And because um, we still have some of our skill positions out and the offensive line of the Cardinals prevents them from fully using their skill positions, the quarterbacks are not really going to be dueling that much as it's, they're going to be game managing. That's just the type of game I think it's going to be. And I think the Giants can really come out with a win here because of our improving defense, our surging pass rush, and the return of Saquon Barkley, which is going to do a lot for this team. But that's what I got for you all today. Let me know what you all think. I know it's been kind of all over the place, but I had a lot of thoughts I wanted to put into this. And it took me a while to even compartmentalize some of them. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Giants can come out with a win? Do you agree with my breakdowns? Do you think it's going to come down to a game of inches between the lines of scrimmage? Or is it going to be a quarterback duel? Like, share, and subscribe to me. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...